if if you're listening to me and you have a lot of unanswered prayers you have a lot of petitions a lot of requests uh, about 100 and every year you keep moving it forward uh, every year you keep telling yourself it's going to do it this year it's going to do it that year uh, perhaps what you need to do is what i'm about to share with you perhaps the difference between getting answers and still, still being a request uh, is in you doing what i'm about to share with you today I want you to get a pen i want you to just get very serious get a notepad on your phone or whatever it is just engage with today's content this content will transform you i say it again this content will move you forward in that area of your life when god shared this with me i was amazed and i was telling myself if i had known this for a long time uh the speed i would have been moving would have been great okay so someone asked the question why is it that i pray so much and i'm not getting answers to prayers so I want to tell you the mystery of answered prayers the mystery of answered prayers why am i not getting answers in prayers many of us uh, when we get to that point of that space uh, where we do not understand what really is going on when we are tired of asking tired of knocking doors uh, it really get to affect how we perceive god how we believe god answers prayers or whether even god is real or whether god is true uh, today I want to share, like I said with you, an important secret, that missing point, that missing link, uh, where many believers get it wrong as it concerns answer to prayers. Let me start by saying that there are different kind of prayers. There are different kind of prayers. Uh, there is what you call the prayer of adoration, the prayer of worship. Uh, there's another prayer you call the prayer of thanksgiving the prayer of another one the prayer of repentance another one the prayer of consecration another one the prayer of petition the prayer of request petition when you just make your request known unto god according to philippians and chapter 4 another one is the prayer of intercession this is where you just stand at the gap and pray for somebody else or pray for someone else all right god was sharing with me and he was saying you know what um you really find people who don't believe or who don't trust or who, who says that god have not answered their prayer of thanksgiving i'm not sure you can ever find somebody who says god has never answered their prayer of adoration their prayer of worship or even the prayer of consecration or even the prayer of repentance you you really find believers who says to you i i i, I thank god this morning i'm not sure whether he answered you know you hear them say as i was worshiping god uh, as i raised my hand in worship stayed in his presence for about 10 15 minutes i could sense the power of god i could sense the presence of god even where i was so you see we believe that when we pray we get answers when it comes to certain prayers so the problem is not with prayers generally the problem is with that prayer that has to do with prayer of petition i beg your pardon the prayer of petition uh, the prayer of uh, request and the prayer of intercession i mean that's that's the problem we have that's that's the that's the point uh, that's the place the point uh, where we begin to say is god really answering prayers the problem is is he really answering my prayers prayer as it concerns and when we talk about petition requests we are talking about prayer as it concerns the miraculous prayer as it concerns healing prayer as it concerns advancement uh, prayer as it concerns a change of job a new job prayer as it concerns victory in one area or another for your life uh, therefore the first thing i want you to know today the first thing i want you to understand the first principle that you must get right uh, is that you must have faith in your own prayers you must have faith in your own prayers of request just the same way you believe god when you are thanking god when you are praising him nobody even the devil can't tell you that god is not listening you see you need to also come to that level of persuasion when it comes to the prayer of petition why because it is the prayer of faith that saves the sick scripture says in the book of james in chapter 5 again if you if you consider again jesus was speaking whatever thing you desire when you pray believe that you receive so you see that point of believing that that action that thing of having that persuasion that thing in your mind that i'm fully persuaded god listen god add my cry and god is working on it that that faith you must have that belief as it concerns prayer of petition and prayer of request unto god bible says in james chapter 5 verse 17 and you read 17 and 18 
18, the Bible says Elias, or Elisha was a man of like Elijah. Uh, the scripture call it Elias, was a man of like passion. And he prayed that it would not rain upon the earth for a period of three and a half years, and it didn't rain. And verse 18 says, and he prayed again, and rain came. This was a man who, who just petitioned God and said, let there be no rain. Let there be no rain. I said by my word. He just said that, and God did it. Again, you read the book of Judges chapter 13, 8 to 9. Uh, Manuel, who was the father of Samson, uh, was told by the wife that, uh, you know, they were a barren couple, and, and, and an angel spoke uh, even to the woman, and, and the woman said, oh, he went to the husband and said, listen, I, I, I saw a prophet came to me and, and gave me a message. And, and the man prayed. The Bible says in Judges 13, 8 to 9, he prayed and said, God, will you allow this man, this prophet to come again? Because they had questions they wanted to ask. And scripture says in verse 9 that the Lord listened to the voice of Manoah. Can you see that? The Lord listened to the voice. So when you pray in, in your room and church, wherever it is you're praying, you must believe that the Lord is listening to your voice. Scripture says the Lord listened to the voice of Manoah and send the angel again listen when god listens god listens to your prayer so you must get it right whether is whether there is whether you have seen a manifestation or not there must be a persuasion in your heart that the lord listens the bible says in jeremiah 3 and verse 3 scripture says call upon me and i will answer you and i will show you great and mighty things of which you know not so our own portion our own side of of the covenant is to pray is to call upon him and his own side is to answer us. They call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things of which you know not. Bible says, and those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. So you see, scriptures are very the scripture is abundantly clear that when you and I pray, then the Lord listens. So you must have faith in your prayers. Some of us are, are, don't even have faith, don't have faith concerning that thing anymore. All we say is, I've been praying about this for a long time. I've been praying about it. You say, I should pray again. I'll pray again. But you see, you, you're just trying it. You need to believe that God listens. You need to believe that who you are talking to akin to you. Let, let's me, let me give you a practical example here. If, if you pick up a call, if you keep up, pick up a call, someone calls you and you pick up the phone and then, you, uh, hello, you, you expect to also hear a response from the other side. Is that not so? If you're not hearing anything, uh, then it's not a conversation. Uh, you, if you call someone and you're asking what's going on and nobody's responding, you're going to drop the line and you're going to say the network is bad. Why? Because nobody's listening on the other side. Listen, there is a God listening on the other side. When you and I pray, we must have for our faith uh, that God is listening on the other side. Now, let me progress here very quickly. First, our definition of prayer must also change. If you are going to get, this is the mystery of answered prayers. And it is in the definition of prayer. Uh, I want to give you the basic definition of prayer. Because in the basic, you will understand that certain times you and I miss it. Uh, and that is why we do not get answers in the place of prayer. And I'm going to explain that to you. I don't want you to go anywhere because we're getting into the deep secret of God now. I'm, I'm about to share some mysteries with you right now. Listen, prayer is communication between God and man. Prayer is communication between humanity and divinity. Now that word communication means there is an encoder and there is a decoder. Uh, it means that you encode information which we call talking to God and God must be able to decode that information and there is also what is called response even in communication. Just like I gave you the example of, of, of a phone conversation, of a phone call. Now God is supposed to respond to you in the place of prayer. It is God speaking to man. Most times what we call prayer isn't prayer. What we call prayer isn't prayer. I'm not trying to sound different. I'm not trying to be controversial. But I'm just telling you the truth of scriptures. Most times what you and I call prayer is just talking to God. Now prayer involves talking to God. But talking to God is not all there is to prayers. It also involves God giving us information, us receiving information from God. And what we call prayers is wrong. It's not just talking to God. It is God talking to us back. Because if God had listened, if you write a petition to someone, the person must respond. Because it is in the response that you know what they are going to do or what they have done about the petition or the process of the petition to be heard or to be listened to. Or maybe you need to write it again or do 
something differently that happens uh, because of a feedback system in prayers there must be a feedback god must also talk to us uh, now the purpose of prayer now let me say this to you the purpose of the prayer of petition and the prayer of intercession and prayer of request uh, is just one thing is to change situation do you understand that uh, it's not thanksgiving thanksgiving may necessarily you just want to find god praise you just want to pray. It's consecration. You are not looking for a change. But when it comes to the prayer of petition, a prayer of request, or prayer of intercession, what you are basically asking is that you are seeking for a change. You are seeking for an intervention. You are seeking for, for something to move. For something to move. And that is what you and I call the prayer of request, the prayer of petition. You petition God. Make your request known unto God. Paul said while writing to the Christians at Philippi. Now, this is important. It's important to understand this truth. Now, there are two ways because what you are asking God for is that God should interfere in your affairs so that there be a change in your life story. Do you understand that? You are saying, God, come into my life. Come into this situation. Come in into this situation. I've been jobless for a while. Come into this situation. I need a job. All right? Practically, you're saying, okay, somebody has been sick and you're saying, Lord, heal him. Lord, heal him. Lord, heal him. Or there be a strange pattern inside in families. Uh, and, and they are saying, God, this happens every December. This happens every time. Uh, God, you need to change this situation. Now, what you are asking for is for a divine intervention. Uh, now, I want you to understand tonight. I want you to understand at this episode uh, that there are two ways God interferes in the affairs of men. Many times we only look at one side many times we only put our focus on one side and that's why we don't get answers to prayers we don't know what to, how to work it out how to work it out how to work it out pause it working out uh, your salvation with trembling and with fear but we need to understand importantly that there are two ways god interferes in the affairs of men god answers prayers in two ways number one by himself alone God answers prayers through the pages of scriptures. If you read from Genesis and you read to Revelation, you will see God answering prayers. When men pray, God comes in. God acts on their behalf. And when God comes in in a supernatural element, in a supernatural dimension, in a supernatural force, through a supernatural power, situations change. In spite and despite of them, all they did was to pray and God changed that situation. Many of us are sure and we are conversant of this way by which God answers prayer. We know this is the way he answers prayer and this is good. It's a vital part of prayer. But it is not all there is uh, to prayers. And there are numerous examples in scriptures of this. And, and you can begin to just think about it and say, yes, you, some of us are already having those examples come into our head. You know, Paul and Silas in the book of Acts chapter 16, scripture says they prayed and they sang praises. Uh, and without them doing anything, there was an earthquake. And Bible says that uh, the gates, prison doors were open. That was God's intervention. All they did was to pray. All they did was to praise. And God stepped in. Uh, God did not do, they didn't have to do anything much more than prayers and praise. Uh, and then God came into the affair. I'm trying to say God walked himself alone. Uh, that is the mission of answered prayers. God do it alone despite of us uh, it doesn't need us uh, and then the scripture says in Acts chapter 12 bible says to us and i love it bible says peter was in prison uh because the king Herod had put him in prison and the bible says something that the church uh, incessantly continuously made prayers for him uh, ceaselessly they prayed for him uh, and the bible says an angel of the lord came uh, and delivered him from prison opened the doors of the prison, opened the chain uh, and, and made the people sleep, made the, made the people who were supposed to watch over him sleep, the soldiers, they slept, uh, deep sleep fell upon them and they took him out uh, even of the prison. This was fully God. Peter had nothing to do with it. In fact, scripture says Peter was sleeping. So they, he woke him up. Bible also says, and I love this, Genesis 25 verse 21, Isaac prayed, scripture says Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren the lord answered his prayer and his wife rebecca became pregnant can you see that he prayed that looked like anna hannah also prayed you see they prayed and for some of us listening you need an intervention as it concerns pregnancy 
you need an intervention as concerns certain things and you can see from scriptures this is what happened they prayed and there was an intervention supernaturally someone who has been barren someone who is not it wasn't like they were not trying they were trying to have babies they were trying to get pregnant but they couldn't get pregnant and just because isaac prayed scripture says and the lord opened the womb the lord did it the lord answered his prayer and his wife rebecca became pregnant now that is the first way in which god answers prayer how many of us are just conversant with that and i see many believers every time they pray for something they just keep praying they just keep going knocking on that door they just keep doing that same thing and eventually they don't get anything and they're asking what's going on because you see we want to use the same formula for everything we do Number two, and this is a mystery. When God showed me this, I was excited. How will God answer your prayer? God will answer your prayer in cooperation with you. Can I say that to someone again? God will answer your prayers in cooperation with you. God answers prayers by leading us to the path of answers. God answers prayers by giving us instruction, by guiding us. One thing you must understand when it comes to spirituality is that the spirit of guidance and the spirit of wisdom work with the spirit of prayer. Listen, at certain times you are praying about certain things, asking God to do certain things for you, certain things in your be- on your behalf, uh, you are petitioning heaven, and what God is going to do in order for you to have answer in that prayer concerning what you are asking, God is going to give you an instruction. God is going to guide you. He's going to tell you, leave where you are and begin to go to somewhere else. God is going to give you an instruction. Now, you need a job and God is telling you, leave where you are right now. Leave your present location and go to another location. Now, that does not seem like a job. But God is saying what you need is a change of place. What you need is a change of location. Now, you discover that when you change location, bam, what happens? You get a job. What God does to us, what God does in answer to prayer is that he needs your cooperation. Now, if that person who is praying for a job will not hear and does not listen to God that you need to change location, that person will be on that prayer point for 10, 15 years and they will say God is not answering prayers. But God is answering prayers because God has given an instruction. But the person is not answering, is not hearing, is not listening, and so he's not doing what he's supposed to do, and therefore God is also tied. His hands are tied, literally, and he cannot do what he's supposed to do concerning you. Listen to this. Bible says God told, I mean, God through the prophet told Naaman, and said, go and wash in the river. And as he went to wash in the river, the man was complaining. And he, say, he was saying, are the, are the waters of Abana, are the waters of Vapor, are they not better than the waters? Uh, but God had already said, this is what you should do. And the moment he went to that river, took his bath. What has taking a bath got to do with being ill with leprosy? He has taken so much birth in his life. And so, but because God's instruction had come out. Now, let me say this to you. It is not only the instruction that is powerful, it is the obedience obedience in the instruction that is powerful. Do you understand that? So it is when we obey God's instruction that we begin to find answers. John chapter 9, Bible was talking to us about the man who was born blind and Jesus, Bible said Jesus made clay uh, and then he put it on his eyes and says you go and wash in the river of Siloam. Of Siloam. And as he went, he, as he went and take that, he took that bath, he started sin. What was happening? God gave an instruction. Moses uh, in the front of the Red Sea. And this is very important. It, it looks like a big, a long reading, but I would love to read that to us. Uh, Exodus 14 and 15 to 18. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Now, that tells you that Moses was praying. That tells you that Moses was praying, God, will you not help us? This is the Red Sea in front of us. We are boxed in. Uh, I used to uh, preach, preach a message called Checkmate. Uh, they, there was a Checkmate in front of them was the Red Sea. Beside flanks uh, were mountains, hills, uh, and behind them uh, was, most, was, was was Egypt, uh, Pharaoh, and his army. So they were checkmated. There was nowhere to go. But God said, and scripture says, Moses began to pray. Like many of us, we are checkmated. We are in a struggle right now. And Bible says, why are you crying out to me? God told Moses, he said, tell the Israelites to move on. And what he said, raise your staff. 
stretch out your hand over the sea to divide so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. So God gave an instruction. He prayed and God gave an instruction. Joshua was also fighting a battle. Bible says in Joshua chapter 6, 7, 6 to 12, they were fighting against Ai, a very small nation. In fact, they said, don't after Jericho had, f- had fallen, they, they said, don't let every member of the army go. Say, let us just send 2,000 men because this is a small nation and how he defeated them. And so Joshua fell on his face. Joshua fell on his face. Bible says in Joshua 7, 6 to 12, then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. That means he was in prayer, intense prayer from morning till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their head. And Joshua said, Ah, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring these people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Oh Lord, what can I say? Now that Israel has been routed by his enemies, the Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this. And they will surround us and wipe out our name from the heart. What then will you do for your own great name? And the Lord said to Joshua, Can you see that? The Lord said to Joshua, When you pray, the Lord must say to you, When you pray, you must be expectant that the Lord will say something to you. The Lord said to Joshua, Stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. And so God went ahead and told him what was wrong. Listen to these signing times what you are going through and what you are saying God should answer. It's not that God cannot do it. It's because God himself is tied because there is his command. So what God is saying is you need to change your ways. Listen, but you will not know how to change your ways or what side of your ways to change except you listen in the place of prayers. And therefore, I have an issue with a generation that is very loud, a noisy generation. There is a point and a place we must come to where we must steal our soul. Where Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Your spirit must be calm. Your spirit must search. Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask, you shall be given, seek, you shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened to you. Whosoever ask, receive. You see, another translation says, ask and keep on asking. You need to seek. God, why? Why is this happening? What is going on? And when you ask such questions in the place of prayer, can I say something to you? Be still. Be quiet. Just lie face down like Joshua in in, in the presence of God until he speaks to you, until he says some things to you, because it's in his instruction is life, in his word is direction. Bible says in Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the only one of Israel, I'm the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 6, Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him. And Bible says, and he will straighten your path. How will God straighten your path? He can do it himself, but he would also do it with you. So he was going to tell you, this is what you are supposed to do. I've seen people asking God for, for a life partner, asking God, and when, when, they, when they are praying, they just see that, and that's why you hear people say, God, I'm praying for this, God is telling me something else. I'm praying for this, God is telling me something else. You might be praying for, for, for a life partner, and God is telling you, go and do a diploma program. Go and do your master's. You just sense that. Anytime you start praying, that academics just start coming to you. You just want to continue uh, in education. God is probably telling you to do that because that might be the place where you'll find your life partner. God might actually be telling you to do that because God wants to set to that part of your life first. You see, you need to understand, if you don't listen, things will not change. If you don't listen, things will not change. I remember I was talking to someone and the person was saying, I have a problem at my place of work. I have a problem. What, what can be done? I said, go and pray. And the more I pray, the more I, I, just, I just said to, to the person, I said, listen, you need to change your character. You need to change your nature. You need to become more respectful. Because you see, when the person did that, and then everybody, those who hated that style, they, they now became our best pal. Now you are praying that God should kill that your boss, that God should remove your boss. Say kill him, kill him, kill her, kill him, kill her, kill her. You see, all those things will not happen because the problem is not them, the problem is you. And God has been talking to you, but you have refused to listen. Bible says in 32 verse 8 of Psalms, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will cancel you and watch over you. In prayer, one thing God does is that he instructs us and teach us. That's why I kept telling you and I will keep saying it that one thing you need is that you need a spirit of wisdom. 
as you pray, you need the spirit of understanding, the spirit of guidance. God guides us in the place of prayer. That's that's our instruction, knowledge, wisdom are things that work even with intercession. They work even with prophecy. They work even with prayer. As you pray, your ears must be open. You can't be too loud. You can't just go hey, gotta, I gotta, and just stand do glossalia. It's important. It's good uh, to pray in tongues. I do that also. But you must have a time where you just lie down, where you just lie in the presence of God and say, speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. I remember a song we used to sing when I was growing up. Speak to me, Lord Jesus. I need to hear from you. If you don't speak, Lord Jesus, I don't know what to do. You need to understand that God needs your cooperation. I love John chapter 2 verse 5. There was a disgrace that was going to happen. And Jesus' mother said to them, Whatever he tells you to do, do. As you seek the face of God for a change, this is the mystery. As you seek the face of God for a change, listen to what God is saying. Because it is in the instruction of God that the answer is. This is how to live in the answer. This is how we miss it. We expect God to do everything 100%. And we say, I'm waiting on God for a life partner. I'm waiting on God for that job. I'm waiting for, on God for healing. I, I mean, I was just telling someone about, about just about now. And I was saying, you know, certain patterns are going on in certain families as it concerns else. And, and believers are praying. And God is telling them, you need to change your appetite. And as you pray, you see it in your spirit, uh, your appetite, the kind of food you eat. Uh, you are eating pounded yam, so much sugar, fufu, and you have a blind aid that is of diabetes. And you, you are saying to yourself, God will do it. No, you have to understand that what God is saying is that in your healing is wisdom. You need to stop taking some things. You need to change your appetite. Uh, you need to stop drinking. Uh, I was praying for someone who had was who, who, whose kidney was becoming faulty, and she and he drinks a lot. And I was telling him, I said, much more than prayer is that you need to also stop drinking because the sugar there will kill you. These things will affect your life, and this thing will destroy your life. Uh, and you see, these are things that God does to us. This is how God answers prayers. Uh, the next time you are saying God is not answering your prayers. I want to ask you a very simple question. Have you heard from him concerning that matter? Until you've heard from God, until you have sought the face of God to hear from him, then you will not find answers. Sometimes God will say, go and praise. Remember the story of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was faced with Moab and all the armies. There were so much. There were so many. Second Chronicles and chapter 20. Bible says, and, and they started praying. And as they prayed, a word came from God. And God said, you will not need to fight even in this battle. And then the more, and then Jehoshaphat said in 2020, believe the Lord your God, you will be established with prophet and you will prosper. And then he received that they would win this battle by praise. And they began to praise. That means that from the place of prayer, divine strategy comes. And you must listen. Divine strategy comes uh, to change that situation. Whatever it is you're facing, God might say you need to sow a seed. Uh, God might say you need to engage in midnight praise. Uh, just praise me deliberately and intentionally for the next seven days. Uh, God may say you need to change your character. You need to change uh, your intention. God may say my problem is I need to break you. Because if I give you that thing without breaking you, breaking your heart first, uh, you will be pompous, you'll be proud, and that thing will destroy you. So sometimes God will work on you. God will say certain things to you. And until we start doing that, we will not live in the answers. This is how we live in the answers. If we begin to to seek God for his mind as it concerns those things we are praying for, we will increase the potency of our prayers, the efficiency of our prayers, and begin to see more answers even in the place of prayer. I believe this has helped you. I would like to see know what you think, what your mind is concerning this matter. I'd like to see uh, your comments. Please drop a comment. Let me know how this has been a blessing to you. The Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. If you have not subscribed to this page, don't forget to subscribe because more content are coming up. More content are coming up. Next week, I'll be talking to you about finances. Someone said to me, I pray so much, but my finances are so, are so terrible. It's not getting better. And I say to the person, listen, there is also principles as it concerns finances in this kingdom. If you do not work the principles and you are just praying, you will not have and you will not enter even to financial abundance. I know that this will bless you. Join me again next week. But before then, remember that grace is sufficient for you, even in the place of prayer.